world's most pressing issues. Joining us on set, Rosen Plevneliev. Plevneliev. Good morning, yes. Is that the good? Right. good? President of the Republic of Bulgaria. <laughs> Mr. President, thanks uh, so much for, for joining us. Thank uh, you. We'll get to, to, to talk about the EU, which we, we love to do. I, I saw some, um, some comments from the Czech president, and, and I'm wondering, Bulgaria <laughs> was able to float debt at lower interest rates than some of the southern European countries that, that we've been following so much. Uh, right. Vaclav Havel said that the destruction of Europe's democracy, he just said this recently, is, yeah. in, it is in its final phase because of two-faced politicians uh, that have opened the door to an EU super state. Do you find yourself <laughs> looking at, at yeah. are you on Germany's side yeah. and trying to hold back on, on moving too closely yeah. together or, or do you think, yeah. you, or are you on the southern uh, European I, I have a meeting today with the President Klaus. I'm going to ask him a direct question. But uh, uh, let's uh, uh, face uh, the two sides of the question you said to me. The one is about the financial markets. Yes, they do and they trust Bulgaria. Why is that? Because Bulgaria uh, um, is a country with, a, first of all, extreme low debt. We do just have a 16% from GDP, which is one of the lowest in 16%. Europe. 16%. 16%. It is just $5 billion. It's really enough, uh, euros. That is really nothing. On the other side, the deficit is, at the moment, we are running a surplus. We are probably one of the, the only countries in Europe, but, the, but uh, it will be 0.7% uh, minus at the, the end of the year. Bulgaria jumped in this year by 12 places up in the World Economic Forum competition just uh, based on its competitive advantages from 74 to 62. And the most important thing, we are growing. Uh, it's 1.3%, 1.5%. For the next year, we are planning 2%. Bulgaria is an island of stability in the region. And if you're stable, you can upgrade, you can grow, you can is, move. Is it, is it, it just seems to me uh, paradoxical that some of the, the, the company, or some of the countries that were more uh, under the, the, the Soviet influence have become more capitalistic than some of the, the countries that, I mean, are you less socialistic than, than some of the, the May countries? I give you a number? Yes. Uh, do you know how much the Bulgarian government takes out of the GDP? It's 36 percent. Do you know how much is that in France? 55 percent. Why is that? We, because we believe that the private sector by its definition is a more effective than the public one. Because of that we leave the money in the private sector. It's just 36 percent. The Bulgarian budget out of the GDP. I, I know some other presidents. In Europe, I know some other average, presidents, some that I know well, <laughs> that, that I wish would, I don't hear that same rhetoric from, from some other presidents. The countries in Central and Eastern Europe uh, prove that they can make reforms. So just look at the situation now. Uh, in Bulgaria, we do have in the past two years a pension reform and the way it's finished. Uh, educational reform and many other reforms. So if you are capable of taking tough decisions and you can prove that you can perform, well, markets will trust you right. and investors will do the same. Mr. President, up until about a year ago, or maybe even less, you were planning on joining the euro and adopting the euro. Could you see a point in the future at which you would still want to adopt the euro? On the long future, definitely yes. Uh, on the other side, Bulgaria will now be waiting to see how the whole uh, story will be developing. Let me give you an example also about the discussions in Europe. Do you know how much is the tax rate in Bulgaria? Well, it's 10%. It's a flat rate tax for 10% on personal and corporate level. It is just flat 10%. And what we learned by reducing the taxes, we have improved and increased what? the income of the state. So by doing so, Bulgaria is a good example that you can be this doesn't sound, effective. doesn't sound fair, does it, Andrew? I mean, what about the people that, in Bulgaria? That, that, does it sound fair to you, 10%? When I mean, it's you just not fair. Well, the 10% tax was introduced a couple of years ago, and we are uh, very stable. What's, what's probably also because of what the about, tax. Well, how is your, so, how what, is your what, safety? What, what's how is your, no, the question would be, what's the income distribution look like in your country? Uh, well, an income distribution, uh, uh, today we started uh, an interesting discussion in Bulgaria about uh, 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 salary uh, improvements and pension improvements. And as a president, do you know what was the question as I asked at the parliament? Well, guys, nice, fine, we will increase salaries, pensions. Where is the money going to come from? Are we going really to get the money out of credits and increasing debt as Bulgaria was not an example of quick, cheap, easy increase of salaries and wealth 
on a debt base. We are an example of a country which is ready to work out its salaries. They are not high, there is plenty to be done, but we redistribute what we produce and not what we wish. What about unemployment? It's a problem that has plagued a lot of European nations. What is your unemployment You're right. Rate? Unemployment before the crisis was a bit below 8%. Now it's about 11%. Uh, it's not the lowest, but it's not the highest in Europe. It's more average. What uh, have I mean, uh, it's gone up during the period of the crisis. Where do you see it a year or two from now? Well, uh, the unemployment in Bulgaria definitely, uh, with the trend, will be to reach you know, two and a half three years, probably 9%. We start now some programs focusing especially on the youth unemployment. Mm -hmm. We do have a problem uh, offering a program offering 19,000 working places until end of the year. Of course, Bulgaria in the past was also an educational center. And you know what? During the Soviet communist time, Bulgaria was the Silicon Valley of the old Soviet communist bloc. Uh, and even now we have a vibrant ICT cluster, uh, we have a startup culture, and here is where we are targeting a special programs with America, with Israel, with the structural funding from the European Union to uh, position Bulgaria are, are, also. Are, are you in favor of, of a much closer union with, with the rest of Europe, even if it means that uh, the countries that haven't been as fiscally responsible as you that uh, uh, that they're going to benefit? I mean, do you, should there be a banking union? Should there be a fiscal union? Do you want to move quickly towards that, or are you resistant? Like I know? am a very pro-European uh, president, and uh, uh, we believe that the next phase of integration in Europe is going to come, and it's necessary, it's important. What I would like to see more in Europe is that politicians taking bold and quick decisions. It took four years since the collapse of Lehman Brothers, and we were thinking about this and the other one. And if you want the markets, the investors, and the world right. to trust you, you need to trust yourselves first, that you have a plan. You're moving in the right direction. So this is all about Europe. Having a plan, sticking to it. Is this going to be a financial union? Fine. Political union? Fine. Banking right. union? But please develop you're, 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 and move. Bring results. You're going to have... You're going to share the problems of countries that are not quite as private sector oriented as you are. You're, right. you're, going, to, you're going to take you're on right. Portugal and Spain and Italy and France. You're going to take all those problems. Your people, yeah. which are finally getting to the point where they're going to be able to enjoy some of this prosperity from your efforts, you're willing to... Yes. Yes? Yeah, absolutely right. But let me tell you something. Europe, uh, even now it's in some troubles, Europe has a bright future. And everyone should work for this. A more integrated Europe, a world economic power, but also political power, deserves. But they, would, they, they need some of the same market reforms that you've already affected. Well, we are definitely sure that uh, this will happen. European really? countries are now getting aware that competitiveness is a very important tool. Right. Um, we haven't addressed this, and we probably should. Perception of corruption. So the European Commission comes out with this, re recently came out with a new study. I think they do it every year. Bulgaria is on the list. So how do you change the perception? It's high on the list in terms of this, this corruption issue. How do you change that perception among the business community, among the political community? Let me give you a fact. Uh, three and a half years ago, Bulgaria uh, had some difficulties with the European structural funds. Uh, they have been stopped for some of the big infrastructure projects. Now, three and a half years down the road, Bulgaria is only one of the three European countries which performs great and has no structural funds stopped. How this change happened within three and a half years? Well, there was a very bold decision by the government to employ young people. Uh, now we have ministers, experts at 33 years old, 35 years old, as the managers, they just focus on improving transparency and what we do in a big infrastructure projects. And actually today, the error rate of Bulgaria running European structural funds fell dramatically down from 15% to 2.1%, which is one of the best in Europe. Change is possible within three and a half years. And Bulgaria is a good example of this. Very good. President, Mr. President, thank you. For I thank you too. Good luck at the, uh, at the United Nations yes. and all the meetings this week. Yes. We appreciate it. Thanks I thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you.